shall we shall we watch a video on the old internet chat who remembers the old internet who remembers the dial up internet the i'm pretty sure i have the sound somewhere here who remembers <laughs> Who remembers good old days, AOL lines and telephone and slowing down the internet? Oh boy, let's get into it. Uh, listen up. Nice. Do you want to watch every piece of media known to man to the detriment of your mental health? Do you want to buy paper yes. towels, a fursuit, oh, yes. and the skull of a rat all with one click? Do you want to see naked lady? This wouldn't be a sponsor for Tamu, right? The, it, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be advertising Tamu right now, right? Boobs at any time, at the wave of a hand, at the drop of a hat. Well, might I introduce to you the internet? It all. <laughs> oh, it's just the internet. Never mind. It's just the internet. That's fair. Welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Starts here and ends here, baby. It's all going to shit. The internet is pretty much the closest thing we have to God in the 21st century. We go to it for information. We use it to align our moral compasses. We go to meet people and create communities. I mean, I don't really have to wrong. explain the internet to you. Obviously, you know how to use it, which is good because it- Didn't have the internet till I was 22? Wow. Wow, I practically grew up with it. Practically, it's almost impossible to explain the internet, but it's been around for 40 years and in that time It's become an essential part of modern life like running water or little treats But since its primary concern is innovation and progress We take for granted that the internet's roots stem for over half a century all of this used to look way different It wasn't a place for clean looking message boards and intuitive AI. It used to be a mess. I still have like a, a memory of like my mom turning on the internet with like it being like used by AOL and it mainly being like oh I can't even describe it oh my aphantasia is hitting me hard with this one man because it's because the memory uh ah uh, like literally gray background like a window in the middle like a top bar the top a top bar, uh, like a bottom bar like you used to have to type in the www dot before going to a web page. Can you imagine the time that would take? So in terms of both history and understanding, I thought it would be important to look back on the internet's shaky past. Today we're gonna peel back the layers of the internet and find the original wallpaper the house started with, and maybe we can all learn a little something. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! This color of the background! Oh my god! Yes! 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 Ah! Oh, I hate and I love it. I hate and Long I love way. it. Come on, kids. Let's go explore the old internet. Internet yeah. Explorer! Wait, did you guys tell yeah. your parents about this? Do they even know where you are? Oh my god, this is not good. I'm not even sure there's an exit to this place. Unlucky. Origins. The year, 1997. A man named Woo! Robert Metcalf stands on the stage at the World Wide Web Conference with a blender. For some reason. Robert was known really? throughout the <laughs> industry as being the dude who made Ethernet possible. You know, Ethernet, that thing that makes you not glitch out whenever you're trying to clutch up of overtime in Rocket League. Yes. But if he's such a genius, then why is he standing on a stage with a blender? Well, two years prior in 1995, Robert wrote an article saying that the internet would collapse by 1996. And if it didn't, he would eat his word. And although Bobby was a dork, he wasn't a pussy. So he put that article in a blender, put some water in there, and then ate it with a spoon. I'm proud of him. A man of his word. Actually, a man of his word. I... Wow. Which is pretty baller. The internet surprised everyone, even the people who were involved with developing it. Much like the cavemen who harnessed fire, the scientists who made the internet probably just wanted to have fun with it and maybe be mean to their friends while using it. So in order to understand sure. the humble origin... Wait, what does this shirt say? I lost my virginity while... Ist... Ing... To... What? Listening? To, to of what? The system that now Elvin runs everyone's lives literally. Someone. We have to jump all the way Elvin back Flans. to the Cold War. So forget 1997. We're going back to 1957. What? Ignore that. I, don't know I who shouldn't that even is. talk about that. In 1957, the USSR launched Sputnik into space, which was the first satellite ever to go into space. This created a right. mild fear throughout the West that uh, Russia's technology was greatly outpacing America's, and it kind of was. No. They just launched a smart toaster into space, and we we weren't even close to that. This kicked off an extreme escalation in the Cold War, which led to an arms race, the moon landing, and the launch pad for what would become the internet. And that wasn't. 
isn't a pun. I know we're talking about space. I just can't think of a better name. The gra Foundation. The Foundation. The current sitting president at the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, created the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA. ARPA originally was Arp made to develop military technologies because we were not doing great about that. But while they were making bombs and stuff, uh, sure. they also thought it was important to make a network of 200 computers from all different locations that were able to communicate with each other. The working yeah, title sure. for this system was I the Intergalactic Computer then. Network, which I am so... Like, literally, like, back then they used to fucking communicate by, like, literally going from one place to another and delivering letters. Of course, this would only seem like a smart decision to create, like, I think, even if humanity would be wiped out and, and the internet would disappear again, humanity would come back to the internet. Humanity would ev eventually arrive back to the point that the internet is created. 100%. 100%. The internet is destined to be. Yes, we call this shit the internet now because that is a way tougher name. And although we take the concept of computers talking with each other for granted nowadays, it was unheard of in the 60s. Computers weren't things that like you watch porn on. They were just pretty much massive calculators. That's all they were doing back then. That'd be like me telling you, hey, by the way, now your microwave can call your friend's microwave. And you'd be like, Okay, what, why would they want to do that? What, what, for what purpose? Is it going to use my data? What data plan does it have? By the late 1960s, and against all odds, ARPA had finally created the first computer network, which made future pirates rejoice in unison. And on October 29th, 1969, ARPANET set its first computer message. A house-sized computer at UCLA sent uh, mm -hmm. the message login to the house-sized computer at Stanford. This unbelievably massive message with way too many letters immediately crashed the system. It was not ready for L-O-G-I-N. Five letters. And because uh... it crashed, Stanford Lucky. only got L and O out of the message. It didn't even L -O. get the full thing over there. And then they tried again and it worked and then they got the message login. But technically the first letters ever sent over on the internet were LOL, which I think is, I mean, silly. And it's pretty good. That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Fun, is that not interesting? <laughs> Although this might seem like a disastrous first spin, it was viewed as a massive success by ARPANET. We Before did ARPANET, it! if you wanted to see what a computer was doing, you'd have to like walk over and look at it. Ew, what the Ew. fuck? The technology was continually being developed throughout the 70s. And in the early 80s, a model that standardized how data was transferred was created. ARPANET officially uh, went to this standard model in uh, January. What the fuck? <laughs> Bruh. Bro, he almost got assassinated! That officially uh, went to this standard model in uh, Jan... <laughs> what is that? Created. ARPANET officially uh, went to this standard model in uh, Jan... Oh, bro, what is that? What is that? That's a cat! Oh my god, it's a cat! That's a cat side profile! Holy shit! <laughs> okay. ARPANET adopted this model in January 1st, 1983. And the very first iteration of the public internet was born, okay? I'm glad we got here. Jesus Christ. It's just crazy that the, we had to go to war to have internet and space travel. I mean, I, if we want flying cars, we're probably gonna have to throw some bombs at China. I feel like that's the only way to get it done. <laughs> in the oh, early 90s, sounds... a British- Play it again. In the early 90s, a British scientist named Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web, WWW. Known today as Web 1.0, this was the earliest form of the internet that we are, you know, familiar with. During this time, web pages were mostly static. They were just pictures of pages. You couldn't do anything with them. Interactive features or user-generated content did not exist at this no. stage in the internet. In its essence, it was like you were accessing a page of a book by typing in an address, which is chill. You could still see things like dinosaurs sure. and boobs, but you know, yeah. it was, yeah, that was pretty much it. And most pages were made by big businesses as pretty much brochures, but that doesn't mean the average person wasn't getting in on the fun. Instead of social media platforms or blogging sites, people built personal websites that were hosted for free by companies like GeoCities. And much like the early years of FPS shooters, these sites were primitive and- I've seen this before. I don't know where, but I've seen something like this before. 
extraordinarily ugly. They were usually filled with gifts and different flashing colored text. And even though this was the groundwork of what the internet would become, the toxic behavior was still prevalent. You can't take the hate out of humanity. But early internet toxicity was hard to do because you couldn't leave comments on anyone's pages, so how are you gonna let them know you hate them? Well, instead of a comment section, old websites used to have things called guest books, where everyone could post little oh. anonymous things in the bottom of their pages. These were supposed to emulate like a wedding guest book. Uh, like anyone here remember ICQ? Yes, I do. Yes, I remember ICQ. Oh my god, bruh. Uh, ooh. That... <laughs> that burp just disrupted my thought process. Back leave to the wedding, video. You leave a cute little note about, like, I enjoyed the fish or whatever. And you were supposed to do that with websites, but instead someone would just tell someone else to go kill all the time. <laughs> and then they just sign off and play some sweet, sweet Joe Montana football with the boys. Helping propel the web 1.0 era was search engines like Yahoo searches and AltaVista, whatever the fuck that is. Nowhere near as efficient or helpful as modern day Google, these old search engines would just catalog web pages so they were easier to find I for someone who- I actually remember. I actually feel like I remember a time before Google. I feel like I remember a time where people used to use Yahoo to search things like i was very little then i was very little but i feel like i remember my mom using yahoo you were not sentient before 2k6 <laughs> yes i'm older than that i oh my god I have not been born in the 2000s. I was not born in the 2000s, chat. I'm a 90s kid. Chat, I'm a 90s kid. You know, was just looking around. In this process, Semi enabled people for the first time to surf the web. But now that people could army crawl through sites, they were now allowed to fall down the internet rabbit hole. Thus leading to the birth of the bold, the beautiful. Yeah, Jeff! Web 2.0 is what we would define as the modern internet. There wasn't like an actual shift in structure of the World Wide Web, just a massive change in the way we interact with it. While Web 1.0 allowed you to view sites, Web 2.0 allows you to interact with it and create user-generated content. You know, what I'm doing right now. For Get money, in. social media, bl Same. blogs, wikis, video sharing, all the apps. The mail? all hallmarks of Web 2.0. In essence, the collective mindset of what we wanted from the internet spurred the switch into the next generation. No one says they're gonna go log on to Facebook.com. Well, some people do. Old people. But old people are attracted to Facebook mm. like cats are attracted to- Actually, man, my grandma used to be like hella addicted to Facebook. And I'm not saying she got out of her addiction. I'm... saying the other thing. Rip grandma. To shitting on my carpet. But also, it's weird to think of Facebook in general as a website. Today, the biggest websites out there are not viewed as websites at all. They're more viewed as platforms. These tend to be ecosystems of their own, where you can make content, promote yourself, watch other people's content, and promote them. But the irony of Web 2.0 is in its decentralized ethos. While Web. Oh my god. Like, coming back to the grandma part, my grandma has actually or like had actually had so many friends on facebook a lot of them were just left wondering where she like went and why she like stopped posting and shit she had so many international online friends man that's crazy my grandma was hella giga chatting out there on facebook man my grandma had that facebook community man like wow but then um I don't know who did it. I, uh, probably one of my aunts uh, made a post, um, like letting people know that she passed. So yeah. So at least the people like had some closure, not where not just left like wondering what happened, you know. Social butterfly grandma. Actually, she actually was a social butterfly. Oh, I miss her. She was a good woman. She was a really good woman. Kids, are you Gen Z or Generation Y? The hell is Generation Y? I... I don't even think I ever heard of Generation Y. I don't know. 1.0 offered less power because the website owners were also After the creators themselves. Web 2.0 sought to give the autonomy over... Why is Alpha? Millennials? So before 1996... You mean? 
Then you mean before 1996. Why is millennials? Oh, okay. Thinking if I should answer or not. Thinking. Mm. No, I'm not gonna answer. For to the users. But the nature of where everything ended up was that Web 1.0 was just kind of bought out by websites like Amazon, Google, all those big ones. And they all just ended up sucking the internet dry with their overabundance of power. Yeah, these websites offer unique and free services, all of them. But they leverage this power over users to sell ads or to monopolize an entire Whoa. service on the internet. This is known as aggregation theory, where companies control the consumer rather than the supplier of goods. Who? that's fucking scary and once you've gotten all your aggregated consumers mm. into one place then you can corner several aspects of the market i mean remember when amazon used to just sell books they just kept corner markets and now they sell wait i don't remember this at all no everything amazon is now responsible for over 20 percent of all internet purchases and google owns like everything on the internet own pretty much everything so it begs the question what mm. happens next I don't know. Some people talk about Web 3.0, but that's more of an NFT jerk-off dream than anything. But I think when you look too far forward, you end up missing all the things you've already driven past. Was that a good analogy? The new internet is cool, but the old internet is a beautiful landscape of horrendous graphic design, terrible UI, and just nostalgic lessons that everyone should learn beautiful. from. So let's go back to the past that I was at at the beginning of this video. Fuck, did okay. I fuck this up? So let's jump to the old yeah. internet and see if we can't all learn a little something again. Yay! Come on, kids, let's go! Let's go! What? No, you can't call your mom. I'm, I'm genuinely really in deep at this point, so the less they know, the better. <laughs> The old internet! Whoa! Whoa! Welcome Whoa. to the old internet, kids. D can you smell the mold? This place is pretty beat to shit. Uh, a lot of leaks, a lot of poor upkeep. Oh, but do you hear that? That's the sound of my old friend, the Jesus <gasps> Christ. Shut Oh, no. oh, so, I'm sorry. Good lord, that was so fucking loud. America Online, also known as AOL, AOL, began in the late 80s, and by the mid-90s, it was synonymous with the internet. But it wasn't exactly the same. It was like internet light, diet internet. It was a closed computer network with message boards, chat rooms, and email. It was like its own ecosystem. Think one part internet, one part social media, one part Reddit. It, it's like a Frankenstein's basement dweller. This was also a paid subscription service, which turned out to be way ahead of its time. But the challenge of selling an <laughs> internet service in this period Wait! Oh my god! It was history was of course the fact that no one knew what the fuck you were talking about. What the fuck? What what the fuck is this thing? Once again, imagine trying to explain the internet to someone who's never had that before. They'd think you're uh, an annoying wizard. So AOL decided the best way to market themselves was just to show the whole world what they were, and they did that. They did that a lot. They did it too much, I would say. From 1990. Oh my god, th those CDs. Wait, oh my god, core memory unlocked. Oh my god, core memory unlocked. Where you would get those freaking magazines with all these AOL CDs delivered. <gasps> oh my god. World, what they were. And they did that. They did that a lot. They did it too much, I would say. From 1993 to 2006, My mom never AOL let me run those. My mom let me never run those. And I really wanted to see what's on them. Went on one of the most aggressive marketing campaigns known to humankind. They gave away an estimated 1 billion free trial oh discs. You couldn't walk wow. 10 feet in America without stubbing one of your pinky toes on these fuckers. They were in cereal boxes. They were mailed directly to your house. Slipped them inside of magazines and newspapers. Given away on flights. Left at the counter of Best Buy and Barnes and Noble. At one point, this Holy is a wild shit. That 50% of every CD being made in the world was going to AOL. They were taking all of them. This campaign wow. was, unsurprisingly, wildly successful. AOL went from 200,000 subscribers to 25 million subscribers, which is, I don't know math, but that's a per, uh, at least 100% increase. There are a lot of reasons for why <laughs> yeah. AOL appealed to a larger market. And one of the biggest draws that was for really the marketing. appeal was the chat rooms. There were yes, 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 this chat room. I, yeah. I remember my mom using this. Huh? Why is... Where the fuck is someone sending me an invoice on PayPal? Speaking of the in internet chat. Speaking of the fucking internet.
Chat, I think someone is trying to scam me. <laughs> I think someone is trying to scam me. Like... Like, like the email being a scam. I, I feel like this email is a scam. <laughs> speaking of the internet, man. Speaking of the fucking internet. Let me look into my PayPal. Because if this is not on PayPal... Like, if the... I didn't get this invoice on PayPal itself, then... Yeah. Let's see it. No, it's... Uh, I, I, I don't know if I can show this without doxing anything, right? Uh, let's see. I, it should probably be under... Pay and get paid? Wallet? Money, maybe? Any invoices? Yeah, no. <laughs> Yikes. Whatever. Let's continue the video. There's a lot of chat rooms going on and people fucked with that heavy. This is honestly AOL's real legacy at this point. There were chat rooms for literally everything from sports and music to fringe subcultures like pottery and wearing a giant rodent head for self-defense. People would identify themselves in these chat rooms by stating- Oh my god, chat, this chat. Hi Craig, what's up? Nothing much. ASL, please. Oh, this is the sh thing you guys said the other day. Where I didn't know what ASL means. What was it again? H sex location? Was that it? Location. Okay, I'm smart. <laughs> Same but me and UK. Really? 15? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Your age, sex, and location. If you're an elder millennial oh. like me- Fuck! Every time, chat. Every fucking time. Every fucking time. Every time! I am- I'm not living down the YouTuber, like, um, stereotypes, man. I'm not living down the YouTuber stereotypes. Just hearing the term ASL gives you a shudder down your spine and some deep fear in your heart. The reality of these rooms were obviously that a lot of older people were pretending to be teens while talking yes. to other teens. AOL was genuinely the birth of online stranger danger. But nonetheless, AOL was a perfect touchstone for Americans' ability to understand the promise of the internet's connectivity. It even spawned that, uh, corny-ass movie, You Got Mail, with Tom Hanks and that that pretty lady. Peak romantic comedy, peak product placement. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I've seen this one. I'm not sure. Peak Tom Hanks, God bless the internet. But what about those people who enjoyed AOL, but thought to themselves, I'm really important and people should know what I'm thinking at all times every day. Well, take my- Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That sounds very much like Twitter. Hand and come with me. Come on, gang. Let's but go. But of course, it's not Twitter quite yet. Come on. It's not Twitter We're quite yet. There. Can you see it? Woo. MySpace. Oh, e-bloggers. Oh god. Blocks. Okay. Blocks. We're first. missing some kids. The next evolutionary step for the internet came in the late '90s with the invention of blogging. Whereas people before made janky GeoCity websites to share their thoughts and feelings on their own personal web pages, they now had sites like Zanga, LiveJournal, WordPress, and Blogger to express themselves. This is where a lot of teens learned rudimentary HTML because if you could change the color of the scroll bar on your blog, you would pretty much be a wizard. I learned a little bit of HTML back in the day as a kid. Forgotten it all by now. Forgotten it all. But I made my, like, own little website for, um, Neopets. Like, I don't know. It was, like, something people would do, you know? I don't know why. 
at that point in history. By the early 2000s, blogging had really taken off. What once was a haven for angsty teens and bored moms was then infused with serious journalistic writing. 2005 was the first year that a blogger had actual uh, press credentials at the White House, and all this attention meant that bigger companies saw the earning potential in blogs. Google created the technology to monetize blogs in 2002, and just outright bought Blogger in 2003. In 2010, 11% of all bloggers said that their primary source of income was writing blogs. And this movement created websites like the Huffington Post, Gawker, and BuzzFeed. Which is, I don't oh. know if, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that was supposed to happen. And eventually sites like Twitter and Tumblr would create a new kind of blogging called microblogging, where you just throw up little ideas that you have. They wouldn't let you write a whole book, but you could do a little thing. And just let people poop out little genius ideas throughout the day. I do that all the time and no one follows me on Twitter. Please follow me on Twitter. I'm very funny. Today, sites like Mashable, <laughs> Medium, and Substack allow a place for people to continue writing professionally. Over 6 million blogs are currently online and 2 billion blog posts are being published annually. And although blogging may seem out of date today, 43% of websites are still using the content management tools from the website WordPress. So the 90s Wait, are what? never going to die. We got bones in this bitch. Oh, but what's this? You want a little bit more? Bro, the 90s are the best, though. The 90s are just the best, just saying. More spunk and pizzazz sprayed all over your personal web page? Need a little bit more personalized innovation? What's that on the horizon? Come on, gang. Let's go. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? MySpace now? What am I fucking doing? What is this bit? When MySpace launched in 2003, yes! it revolutionized social media. Before MySpace, sites like Friendster, Six Degrees, and LiveJournal wove social media into their sites. But MySpace took MySpace it a step further anyway. with customizable profiles that allowed users to friend one another, share music and videos, write blog posts, DM, and create communities you guys around shared been on interests. MySpace? At its peak, MySpace had 250 million users, wow. even outranking Google as the number one most visited website. And when you signed up for wow. MySpace, you'd automatically have one friend, Tom. Tom is cool. You want Tom to be your friend. Thomas Anderson was a former hacker and musician before co-founding the website of MySpace. And his profile picture of him looking like a nerd in front of a whiteboard became an iconic poster of early Web 2.0. If you don't immediately recognize what this picture stands for, then you're probably a tiny little piss baby that was born after the year 2000 and we can't be friends. I'm sorry we can't hang out. MySpace also became but an- I- I was born in the 90s. I- which one is it? Am I old or am I young? God damn. Important tool for musicians. It became a very legitimate free way to market your music. Adele got her first record deal after playing some demos Yo. on her MySpace page. Oh, forget the music thing. I forgot. The hands down best part about uh, MySpace was the top eight. It was horrendously evil and perfect Wait, at the same that? time. This was a feature on MySpace that allowed you to post your eight best friends in any order you wished. And Oh no. Then link their profile so you could go visit them, which is an objectively insane thing to do to teenage your self esteem. And you could actively oh, change no. the listing. Like if someone was kind of being a dick to you in school, you could put them down oh, at number three. No. Sarah's number one now, bitch. Ordinary people. <laughs> Oh, became no. drunk with power. But sadly, the website eventually died out over time. And the death of MySpace is the definition of not a bang, but a whimper. Over years MySpace of mismanagement die? and several sales of the business itself, Facebook eventually took the throne of mm. the king of social okay. media. And then MySpace tried to bill itself as like this site uh, for music discovery, like a new SoundCloud. I mean, for a while, MySpace had the largest digital music uh, library in the world. But then in 2019, the site changed servers and they lost 53 million songs from 14 million artists. So. Okay, wow, that's bad. <laughs> They've just been fucking up for a while. And with the updated yeah. design, MySpace uh, remains operational, but it's There's lost all nostalgic purposes. Hunter? Why are you hunting guinea pigs? Or are you a guinea pig that's a hunter? If that's the case, that's better. If you're hunting guinea pigs, what the fuck? It really is a wasteland, a cautionary tale about uh, documenting every step of your life on social media before it became a real problem. Digital but print. speaking okay. of wastelands full of horrendous content, I see another beautiful website on the horizon. I'm not gonna do that run thing though. Can we bring it to me? Thank you. I don't know why I was doing that. That's kind of embarrassing. No, you should have run. What is that? E Before Reddit and 4chan, there were sites like Ebombs Worlds, Newgrounds, and Funny Junk. These were less extreme versions I don't of know shock any sites of them. like Rotten.com or Lively. These sites focus more on gaming culture, comedy, and just being chronically online altogether. But they still trafficked in the odd, absurd, and click here for free condoms. That is so funny. What the fuck? Like, what do you mean click here for free condoms? What the fuck? And it's often pornographic and a lot of hentai. There was a lot of hentai on these sites. But for all of their faults, mainly just stealing content from other websites, they were instrumental in forming what we know today as meme culture. They created this kind of meme, which is antiquated as fuck nowadays, but they really solidified the top text, bottom text format. They made these dudes, which are uh, oh! cringe as fuck nowadays. Wait. Really? Oh. 
Oh. Days, but are pretty much just precursors to these guys, which we're using oh. now. They popularized iconic timeless memes like this thing and the Numa Numa guy. And they created homes for a lot of creators that went on to do great stuff in the entertainment industry. Cough, cough, go watch this video. Yep. And ripples of all of these movements can still be seen today in the meme pages of Facebook and Instagram. I mean, first of all, they will just steal content from other people without a second thought. That's just kind of part of meme culture. But making yeah, slight iterations memes. of memes upon memes all began back when Ebomb's world was still a thing. These sites were so important that the Library of Congress decided to start archiving their pages. So now that uh, historically we'll have uh, records of the gooning meme, which is crazy to me because that means Biden... Gooning is harm buffle. You heard it here first. It might have been briefed on gooning, which is so funny. <laughs> Part 5, some survived. Alright, now that we've covered some big hitters, I realized in my travels that I passed by some sites that aren't as important, but are perfect representatives of what the early internet was all about. And what makes them so special is that, against all odds, they are- Dark roll is the pre-rig roll. <laughs> Speaking of rig roll, that is something that probably survived, right? Still being That's run today. Bottle. These sites are still up 20 years later for Wait, some goddamn what? reason. So let's take a look at some websites from the past and realize just how bad Yo! graphic design used to be. Up first, we yeah. have the Space Jam website. When Space Jam first came out in 1996, Wait, it was one of the first animated up? films to use digital technology. Ooh, but Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan hooping it up in space wasn't the only thing that made this film ahead of its time. A small team of designers built a website as a promotional tool for the film. Since the internet was still a novelty, uh, the Warner Brothers didn't really give a shit what they were doing so they, they they were trying a bunch of stuff and looking back that was painfully obvious good god the space jam website is a fascinating look at the earliest attempt to utilize everything the internet had to offer have you guys seen space jam 2 i heard it's bad i haven't seen it though and it's been literal years since i've seen the first one yes probably more than 20 years maybe less I don't know. When did it come out? Offer. There are Easter eggs hidden all over the site. Primitive content you can download. I wouldn't, but you can. And you can play games. How fun is that? The Space Jam That's website cool. is like the future's vision of what websites would become. And they were missing the mark by a mile, but it's still up for some reason. Why is it still up? No one knows, actually. A Reddit account noticed it was still up in 2010, and that created almost a meme culture around the site itself. And someone made a Twitter account in 2013 that every six hours would check if the website was still up, and it <laughs> constantly said yes. And then that Twitter account was nice. shut down in 2022, getting outlived by the the space jam web there's no way <laughs> why did i get shut down website itself what the fuck is going on let's move a little bit down the line and take a gander at one of the weirdest things that's still around yeah, on the he's internet doing the which walking is the 1996 again. bob dole campaign page when bob dole ran for president in 1996 he was the oldest one to try that at the time he was seven <laughs> at the time three years old god damn take me back and him <laughs> Being over 70 years old is crazier because he was the first president to ever try doing a website for his campaign. So like, you know, the old old guy still got it. At the end of his first debate against Clinton, he dropped the URL for his website. He did forget to put the dot before org, but you know, he's a 73 year old man in 1996 talking about websites. So I'm just glad he got any of the words out. And the site was pretty revolutionary for its time. Visitors could create their own buttons and posters by printing shit out. You can take quizzes, you nice. can play the crossword puzzle, and you can even send customized electronic postcards and email. How quaint, how cute. But we know the reason why this site is still up. It's being archived by the Presidential Campaign Archive, which would be a really cool oh. moment in history if not for the fact that in 1998 Bob Dole became the spokesperson for Viagra. He what? He what? How? How? How do you go from being a presidential candidate to <laughs> America never changed? It's literally America. <laughs> oh my god, God, I love America. God bless America. So, now, now everyone just thinks of boner pills when they see this guy. And now let's go to a darker place of the old internet where it gets really cold and scary. And if you guys don't know what this is, I feel really bad for you because we're about I to don't get know real what sad real is. quick. Welcome to the oh. Heaven's Gate webpage. It is, no. uh, it's, uh, it's fucking crazy. If you aren't aware, meaning you're a mentally healthy adult, uh, Heaven's oh, Gate no? was a UFO you guys cult that believed that Earth was run by a bunch of space aliens. Okay? And by rejecting what? your human form, you could transform into an immortal. 
Oh no. Oh no. Portal extraterrestrial being. Oh okay. no. Okay, is everyone still with me? I don't know. Could be true. Oh, Who knows? No. I don't know. Heaven's Gate was most likely the internet's first cult. And sorry, Kanye Quest 3030, you're impressive, but you're nowhere near the first. Now, this website is a cool relic because it's still up, but it's not to say that this cult just only existed on the internet. They just used the technology to financially sustain themselves while also using Fair. it as a recruitment tool. And they, they did use it as a recruitment tool. This is about to become a huge bummer. Buckle up. Heaven's Gate oh, started no. as a company called Higher Source, which offered web design services to local businesses. Uh, while members also created the official Heaven's Gate website. So everything's chill, everything's cool. It's just a space cult with an affinity for making websites. What could go wrong? Well, the real life cult members who were walking around were all castrated. Did they get castrated before or after? <laughs> Did they get castrated before or after joining the cult? Yes. Was it a requirement to be castrated? It was a requirement? What? That's insane. Hard left turn there. And then on one fateful day, they all systematically decided to go the Hemingway. I can't say anything more than that. I'll get to monetize, but you know, they, they're not around anymore. Poison themselves and wrap themselves in garbage bags while they sat in bunk beds. All what the hell? Why would... All due to a website. Holy shit. They thought that if they did it in time, their souls would be able to attach to a comet that was flying nearby and their souls no. could live on it for eternity. I don't know. No. It wasn't right. Uh, that's all I know. They also all dressed up in a uniform before they did the big final act and they what? Chat, what if they actually were onto something? <laughs> like, let's put our tinfoil hats on. What if they were actually onto something, chat? What if their souls are actually living on and they're laughing on us right now as we watch this? <laughs> what if they were actually right? <laughs> Part of the uniform was these shoes, the Nike Decades, and they stopped making them because of this horrible tragedy. Bro, I remember those shoes! Bro, I like those shoes! Those fuckers are the reason I can't have those shoes anymore! <laughs> New York City Monkey, thanks for the prime! Mike Monkey 12 just subscribed for two months. Bruh, those fuckers are the reason I can't have those shoes anymore. But holy shit, these shoes are so cool. I wish I could yeah! get them. I mean, like fucking six grand to get a pair now. Anyway, after the 1997 massive chop suey of the Heaven's Gate cult, two of the members that were still alive decided to stick around and keep the website up. And it's still being maintained to this day, and you can still access it. I don't know why. People have I don't emailed wanna. the websites. Admin. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna end up on on like three different lists if I enter this website, man. No, I don't. I don't. I I I I I'm I ain't gonna I ain't gonna access this website. He's asking why the fuck this is still going around, and their answers have been vague. But you're talking to a UFO death cult, so I, I wouldn't expect anything more than that. But maybe the creepiest part of this Only entire three, website yeah. is the press release they they posted right before everyone went kaput. It says, and I quote: "By the time you read this, we suspect that the human bodies we were wearing." have been found oh my god and honestly there's a couple other messed up websites at this era in history like cannibal cafe and watch this was really not a cool time i mean it was the wild west but things were going pretty dark oh you should i'm kind of glad my mom actually like limited my internet access when i grew up holy crap what is this pretty quick sometimes you need laws i think i sometimes you need laws uh yep. Yep. i don't wait, know how to wait, get wait, out of here wait. oh shit i have kids with me Oh, fuck. I haven't seen them in a while. I hope I left them with Space Jam and not Bob Dole. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, new boy. videos every Saturday. Fuck. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> Great end. Cannibal what? No. Yeah. 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 That was a good video. That certainly was a video. Wow. I, I feel like I'm having an existential crisis right now. Um, because of the end of that, but... 
Yeah, thank thanks for watching. Sure, thanks for watching, YouTube. So thanks for